T-minus 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. It's time to propel with Patricia King and Robert Hodgkin. Welcome to Propel. I'm Robert Hodgkin, and with me is Patricia King. Hello there. <laughs> Patricia, I'm excited because what we're going to do, viewers, is we are going to propel you into supernatural provision. Yeah. And Patricia, does the world need this right now? Oh does the body goodness, need this right for now? Sure. We've just gone through this pandemic situation, yeah. which was not only a health crisis, but for many, it's been a financial yeah, crisis. Very much so. But you know, we have a promise in the Word in Philippians 4:19. It says, "My God will." meet all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ yeah. Jesus. So he doesn't say can, doesn't say might, doesn't say could, says he will, will meet all. And all means all, means all. And the way I think of it, Patricia, is it's like we have this divine bank account filled with unlimited riches of everything we need, whether it's finances or yeah. favor or health, all our needs. But so many aren't seeing that made manifest. And yeah. I recently heard you share a wonderful message on how we tap into that stream of supernatural provision. You gave us eight keys, and I want to share that with our audience so we propel them into yeah, that absolutely. supernatural provision. This is such an important season that we're in because there's, there's great fear in mm -hmm. society. That's our biggest enemy right, right now. And even people who are secure right now in their provision are afraid of their future and the concerns that they have for their provision. But when we know God, we should never have fear. Yeah. We should just know, because as you said, out of Philippians 4, uh, verse 19, that's just one scripture. There's many others mm -hmm. that confirm this, that our God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And I do want to just take a moment here to um, just let our viewers know about this book, Accessing the Riches of Glory, because it's for book. your whole life. You have access. When you are a child of God, you are not just an earthly being trying to get into That's heaven. Right. You are a heavenly being living in the earth, and you have full access to everything you need. And that's not just material That's things. Right. That is the wisdom you need, the peace you need, the, the camaraderie you need from the Lord. The it's joy, like the favor, all of it. Absolutely everything that you need is already given to you through Christ Jesus. So it's really important that as believers, we do not give in to fear, but that we have an absolute confidence in knowing that God is going to be good to us our whole life, Goodness and mercy is going to follow us our whole life, yeah. not just for a little piece of it. Every day we can trust God for everything that we need. Absolutely. And these eight keys are how we position ourselves, how we step into it. So let's get into them. Number one key is keep your eyes upon Jesus. Now this may be a duh, but it's so important because everything we're talking about, when we look to Jesus, we remember who he is, remember what he's done, remember why he's done it, we remember who we are to him. All of a sudden now, it's not, oh, there's all these things going on in the world, there's the pandemic, there's the, 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 the economic crisis, Wall Street's doing this, it's I look at Jesus, I remember who he is, I remember what he's done for me, and we're told every spiritual blessing in heavenly yeah. places has been given to us in Jesus. Yeah. So tell us a bit about this key of keeping our eyes on Jesus. Yeah, I mean, it's so easy to say, keep your focus right. on Jesus, right. but it's another thing to do. And especially when everything in the world around you is shouting, mm -hmm. Um, things that would say, turn this way, turn that way. There's distractions here, distractions there. And especially in difficult times, oh, you yeah. know? So we've got our mind on all these things, wondering how am I going to do it? It's easy to lean on our own understanding, but that is not what is going to bring the supply. The supply is knowing that God plus nothing mm -hmm. equals everything that we need. And so when we look to Jesus, you know, and I tell a story that happened at the very beginning of the pandemic when my husband and I did not have groceries in the house. It wasn't because we couldn't buy them. It's just that you couldn't get them in right. the stores, right. right? And we had a guest that was going to be coming, spending a whole week with us. And normally I'd take a guest out for meals when they come because I don't do a lot of cooking anymore. And my husband and I are more grazers right. than cooking right. meals. And, and I realized, oh my gosh, I can't take them out to any restaurants because of the pandemic. They're all closed, right? And um, we, we, we'd just gone shopping and the shelves were empty. And I thought, okay, Lord. And I went into the cupboard and I thought, I don't have this, I don't have that. 
that. But Jesus, I have you. And immediately I realized, Jesus, you're all I need. Mm. You know I've got a guest coming. You know I can't take them out to a restaurant. You know there's no food on the shelves. And you are bigger than this situation. And I just started to worship him and keep my focus on him. Yes. Do you know within an hour, a woman came to the door full of bags of groceries and said, my husband and I felt that we were supposed to bring you groceries. Uh -huh. and I said, oh my goodness. And she just kept bringing them in bag after bag uh -huh. after bag after bag. I said, oh my goodness. I said, here, let me pay for it. And she said, no, no, no. My husband and I really felt that we were to bless you. And I thought, I'm overwhelmed. This is so beautiful. Thank you. And when I opened up the bags, everything I needed, everything that I'd said to the Lord, I don't have this, I don't have this, but I have you. He had in those bags every single thing All that I mentioned needs. and more That's and great. more and it was just a sign yeah you know it was a sign that he was in control and that if we just look to him he knows what we need before we know what we right. need and if we look to him as our provider because if we look to provision we can falter mm -hmm. but if mm -hmm. we look to Jesus we'll always have what we right. need like I've heard you say um, when there was a time in your in your in your ministry life there was a time when you needed a new dress and you didn't have the money for the new dress and you realize well I don't need money I need the new dress. Yep. Now God can bless us with finances to buy right. a dress or buy a suit or uh, buy a car. Or if we have a need for that thing, he might just give us the dress or the exactly. suit or the car. So we get so locked in on what we think we need and how it's going to come that we almost block. But if we focus on Jesus, exactly. then we expect his goodness and, and we'll see his and goodness. And we're governed way more by the world system mm. than what we realize, right. right? Right. And so we are in a buying and selling mentality a lot of times. And we have to kind of push that out of the way and say, Jesus, yeah. what would you have me do? Yeah. Because you are all I need right now. You know what was interesting for Uri and I during the, the pandemic and the lockdown, we would be talking. And one of the things she said to me is she said, you know what I'm realizing? There's so much stuff we have that we don't need. Right. And what was interesting to me is it wasn't, that didn't then create this situation of we don't need anything so we're going to go into lack. It was just the opposite. When we realized how much stuff we didn't need, we were focusing on God and all the goodness and we were focusing on family or we're focusing on that we have health. We were focusing on all the ways God blessed us. More blessings just kept coming in. In the pandemic, we actually had more blessings than before, but it all started with that thing of what you said. We have Jesus and he's blessed us in so many wonderful ways. We started focusing. We realized how much distraction there was in our life. Mm -hmm. We got to focus on him. As we focus on him, more provision came. Which brings us to your second key. Okay, number one, keep your eyes upon on Jesus. Number two, cultivate expectation. But it's interesting to see how they work together because as we look to Jesus, our expectation rises because we remember who he is, exactly. what he's done, and how much he's blessed us with. Yeah. So we usually do have an expectation. The question is, what is it toward? Oh, that's right? good. So right now, what a lot of people are dealing with is that they have an expectation for failure or that I'm not going to have enough in the future. Yeah. What am I going to do if the market caves in again? Or, you know, I was speaking to a business person the other night. Their whole business tanked mm. during the uh, pandemic, uh, totally tanked. And um, so they were... Uh, considering the future, I said, you have to have an expectation for a good one, yeah. a good future. Yeah. So you're going to have an expectation for something. And it could be something negative, something just come see, come saw, yes. or something that God has provided for you, right? So when we cultivate an expectation for good things to come, because God has promised us to provide to give us abundant life, all these things. When we, we stir up the expectation, that is the soil that miracles take place in. And so miracles um, springboard off of expectation. And that's really Psalm 27, 13. That's what I just looked up. And it's, I would have despaired unless... I expected or unless I thought I would see the goodness of God in the land of the right. living. So even when there's challenges going on, when we expect the goodness of God, we'll see the goodness of God. Your third key, Patricia, was to believe. It's all about faith. Right. Talk to us about that. Yep. So the, the word says one thing and the world can say mm. another thing. Circumstances can say another thing. 
if the world and the circumstances and everything that's happening out there do not line with the word, you have a choice to make. Yes. You're either going to believe what the world says, believe what your circumstances say, or believe what the word says. Believe what the word says Amen. above anything else. If God said it, he will make it good. And I'm not talking about believing like maybe 80% and having right. a little bit of doubt right. in there. Right. Only believe and you stand on God's word. And, and my husband and I, in fact, I've, I've, I've got a book called Step Into Supernatural Provision, which is another tool that might really help you get established in a mindset um, that is toward God and his goodness. But this is the story of my husband and my, my journey in learning how to live um, in supernatural provision uh, with no visible means of financial support when we started it. So all the keys, the keys are there. But it is very important that we stand on the word no matter what, because sometimes people will say, well, I, I did read the word and I did believe right. it, but then right. the circumstances got right. worse. So then I didn't know what to do. So it's like they throw out the word and gaze upon the adverse circumstances. But no, you have to stand on that word. That's right. Only believe. If God said it, he is not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he should repent. He tells the truth. That's right. Well, and Jesus said to Jairus, fear not, only believe. And Jairus was going through a bit of a crisis. Jairus believed. Jairus showed up wanting the Lord to come and heal his daughter. Then circumstances changed. There was a delay with the woman with the issue of blood. He got a bad report that his, his daughter was no longer sick. She was now yeah. dead. He's crushed. That's when Jesus stood before him and said, fear not only believe. I know the report is bad. I know the circumstances have changed, but this is the time to double down on faith. And then what happened? He saw something even greater. The message to you in that is what feels dead in your life right now? Is it your finances? Is it is your hope? Is it your faith? Is it a health challenge with the pandemic? The key that Patricia is sharing with us is we can access that supernatural provision, be propelled into the supernatural provision of health, of life, of abundance, of any kind of provision, the key is to say no to fear and say yes to faith. Yep, absolutely. Which is your next point, point key number four, fight the good fight of faith. Yep. So usually when you take a stand on the word of God and you've got your faith intact, usually there will be an assignment against it. Yes, that. yes. And it, it, it's just almost every time. But we're not to be afraid of that. Right. Because we've already been promised the victory. So we have to fight. We can't give in. We can't throw up a little white flag yeah. and saying, I yeah. surrender to the devil, yeah, right? right. Um, we have to stand and say, no, I'm going to fight with faith because my God's already given me the victory. Yes. Second Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 14 that says chapter, that he that always verse. causes us to triumph. That's not we win a few and we lose a few. That is winning yes, every, single every single time. time. And whatever you're facing right now, you might be in a battle. Will you just stand and fight the good fight of faith with the promises of God and you will come through on the other side, but don't relent. One of the things I like to say, Patricia, is we're never contending for something we hope to see one day. We're contending for a full manifestation of, of what, what we, we know is have. ours. Yeah. And Hebrews 11.1 1 says our faith, your faith is so powerful. Your faith is not just a belief. It's it's not just a hope. It's not just an expectation. Hebrews 11, 1 says your faith is a substance. So uh, the, the substance of our faith, as we choose to believe no matter what, it's actually working to establish in our life what is already ours in the eternal realm. We actually co-labor with Creator God to create what is already ours in the eternal realm, in the temporal realm, through the substance of our faith. That's why the enemy wants to come against your faith. But just tell him to hush, to be mm -hmm. still to be quiet, to sit down. He's defeated. You win. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. And that brings us to key number five. Look to supernatural source, not natural source. Exactly. So in the world that we live in, we, we as believers are actually more stuck in the system than what we realize. Right. And so we're looking at natural things that are happening around us. And we make choices for our life according to those natural circumstances. But when we live in a breakthrough of supernatural provision, we have to look at the supernatural. So even like using as an example where Jesus was feeding the multitude. Yes. He had five loaves and two fish. 
in the natural. Right. Now, if he just looked at it that in the natural, of course it's not going to be enough. And that's what the disciples said. Exactly. Of course they it wasn't enough. They looked to the enough. natural. Because if you're stuck in the natural, you'll never live supernatural. Mm. But Jesus had his eyes on supernatural source. So he used the natural. He thanked God for the natural. He lifted up the natural before God, but he was connecting to the supernatural. And then when the supernatural dimension touched it, then there was replenishment anointing yes. increase on everything with 12 baskets left over after they fed thousands of people. Yeah. Supernatural. So if we get locked into the natural, it'll never be enough. Right. It'll never be enough. We have to think supernatural. We have to think beyond. And God's doing so many supernatural things right now. Crazy ridiculous yes. supernatural things that boggle your mind a little bit. And we know that we were out for a restaurant um, just a couple of weeks ago, and you had mentioned that someone had written in asking me what kind yes, of facial products right, I use. Right. So we're having a laugh about it at the table because I use Vaseline, yeah. right? Yeah, they said, Patricia <laughs> looks so young and amazing. Please ask her for me. What does she use on her face? It's like, I don't know, so I asked Well, you. it was probably Marcella's makeup job that uh, they uh, saw, uh, but uh, we were laughing because I just use Vaseline. My grandmother used Vaseline. I use Vaseline. And you get it at the dollar store. It's, you know, And so we were just joking about it. And a couple of the women were saying what yeah. they, they were using. So then... The next day, in my bathroom, I have two bottles of, of facial creams that were not mine. I never bought them. I thought, what happened here? Did someone come into my bathroom and, and, and wow. put these things on there? So I phoned them and I said, hey, you know, were you yeah. trying to bless me with some facial products right. because you think I should be using something other than Vaseline? And they said, no, nope, no. Nope. Everyone said no. And the only thing I can think of, because I've asked everyone. Yes. The only thing I can think of is that it was supernatural. Yeah. And I thought, and, and I could hear the Lord laughing, you know, and I thought, Lord, you're such a daddy. Yes. That you will even catch our attention to turn our attention towards supernatural, but even funny little things. Yes. Even funny little yes. things. So, yeah. He's I mean, amazing that way. Well, and he not only does these amazing blessings supernaturally, but he's given us, I think when we talk about supernatural provision, I love to think about Deuteronomy 8.18 where it says he gives us the ability power, yeah. to create wealth, the power to create wealth. Now, God can bless us out of the blue. I've had supernatural deposits in my mm -hmm. bank account. You had supernatural face lotion yeah. show up. God can just give those yeah. things to us. But what we have to remember is he's also given us scriptural biblical kingdom principles yep. that work to create Absolutely. wealth. And one of those is key six and another is key seven, but let's start with key six, the tithe. Absolutely. So I have absolute conviction, and so does our team, right. that the first and the best of all that comes in goes to God himself. Yes. He is worthy of it. And God actually never initiated the tithe. Man did. Right. Abraham did. Right. But God loved it. And when he loved it and saw the way his own response was to the honor that was shown him, he put it in the law mm. so that the whole nation could enjoy the benefit of that, right? So we love honoring God with the first and the best. He is worthy of it. The scripture speaks of That's it. That's right. And there's blessings that come from it. Yeah. In Malachi, it says when you tithe, which is simply 10%, and I mean... You know, who wants to stay at 10% when you That's realize right. how big and beautiful God is? You want to go beyond the 10%. But it's, it's like when you tithe, it says that the heavens open up and pour out a blessing for you that you cannot contain. Yeah. And so we can stand on that promise. It also says that God will rebuke the devourer mm -hmm. for you and that you'll be fruitful and you won't lose your fruit. Right. Right. So there's so many blessings that come with the tithe, but it feels so good to say to God, Lord, I honor you. I honor you so deeply because you are who you are and you are worthy of that honor. Yeah. You are worthy of the first and the best. And when Ron and I were going through our, uh, you know, very difficult, uh, challenging times, believing to live with supernatural provision, there was times that we didn't even have food, but I never thought for a moment, well, I'll go buy food instead of giving God his tithe. Uh, I never thought that for a moment. I thought, no, I would rather do without a meal right. and give you what you're worthy of. But I mean, we never did go to bed without food. But the thing is, is that we always made sure that God was put first because when he, when he was, then the, then the provision came. Yeah. 
So. Well, you know, I even think about it in the natural, Patricia, and I know there are some people that think, you know, tithe is Old Testament or tithe isn't for today. And I wrestle with that because even if you look at it just as a natural principle, of think about if God blesses you with an apple. Now, that's a wonderful gift, and I can eat an apple, but there's seeds in that apple. If I take one seed out of that apple, fully enjoying the apple, yeah. but all I'm doing is saying, I'm going to take one of these seeds and plant it, I get an apple tree. Yeah. So really, all the tithe is is saying, God, thank you. I'm enjoying yeah. all the blessings you've given me. Now I'm going to take some of this and plant it by giving it back to you and more will come. Yeah. Which also is now key number seven, sowing. the law of sowing and reaping. Key number seven is to sow. Yeah, that's sowing. <clears throat> like there is a perpetual promise as long as the earth remains. Yes. Genesis 8, 22. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time, and a corresponding harvest. Right. So this works whether you're a Christian or not. Yes. You know, and this is how farmers gauge how much seed that they're going to sow. That's right. Because they calculate what they're going to reap from each seed, mm -hmm. right? So they'll take the size of their field, calculate it out, what they want for a harvest, and then plant the seed accordingly. Yeah. Why? Because there's a law. There's a law that works for all the people all the time. Yes. So when we sow, and I love living to sow. Yes. Like we go out to a restaurant. I learned that I, from you. I love Ron. grabbing I the love bill and sowing. because I know that when I sow mm. into other people's yep. pleasure, then I'm always full of pleasure myself. That's right? right. And I remember teaching a gal who was an intern with us at one one point, and uh, she had been a teacher in the school system, and then was uh, was um, laid off of her job. And so she didn't have income coming in like right. she had before. And I said, you're going to learn the power of sowing and reaping. And she was being very careful with her, her money. But I said, I'm going to teach you how to live with supernatural means. So she had a little book. And I said, every time that you intentionally bless someone, like let's say you go buy them a cup of coffee, right. write it down right. on the date that you bought them the coffee and uh, that you, you sowed the coffee in, in, into their life. Um, anytime that you, um, let's say, give one of your clothing mm -hmm. outfits That's away, right. yep. write that down that you gave that away and you sowed it into someone's life. Okay, so make a list of that and then intentionally now start calling in the harvest of it. Yes. and see what happens. Yes. So the next time someone takes you out for lunch or a coffee, you say, oh my gosh, this is this seed is coming mm -hmm. back. When you get a new outfit, oh my gosh, this is this seed coming That's back, wonderful. right? And, and you go through, but sowing is so beautiful. And Jesus taught on it. And when you sow into good ground and in the kingdom, I love sowing. Yes. One of the things I love sowing is into kingdom mandates to advance yes, the kingdom. Yes. But I want to make sure I'm sowing into good ground. For example, ground where the um, finance that's coming into the ministry is well stewarded that's and cared right. for. And in our ministry, we are very um, watchful over the stewardship of the funds that come into our ministry because we know, first of all, people are giving unto, unto the right. Lord. So that's holy, mm -hmm. that's holy. But also some of them are with such sacrifice. So we never want to take advantage of it or be frivolous with it or anything. So you always want to make sure that you sow into good ground. And just by the way, I do believe our ministry is good ground. Absolutely. If you, if you feel to sow into it to get the word out worldwide yes. into the nations. But yeah, sowing and reaping. And it could be you sow cars. Right. We've sown, sown cars and we get better cars. We've sown housing and yeah, we get better housing. Yeah, I was going to say, you guys taught me I sowed a home and got a better home. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You you can never outgive the no, Lord. You can't. because. you it is a principle. You sow a seed, you always get more than that seed, always. One of the things that will help you overcome any kind of lack mentality is something Patricia and Ron mentored me in uh, early on in ministry. You guys taught me if it doesn't meet the need, it's seed. Yep. So I remember the studio we're sitting in is a great example. When God gave us uh, uh, the vision for this studio, we look, and as I recall, and check me on the numbers because this is 15 years ago, but I, I think we had something like $17,000 available to us. Mm -hmm. And that was not going to build this studio. So I remember you saying, well, I'm going to teach you something. If it doesn't meet the need, it's seed. So don't have a lack mentality that all we have is 17000 and it won't build the studio. We're going to take this 17000 God has blessed us with. We're going to intentionally sow it. So we looked for good... Yep kingdom, holy, righteous ministries that were in media that wanted to go to the next level. And we sowed, intentionally sowed that money in. 
It was within a year, I believe, 14 months, something like that. We had the money we needed to build this studio. Yeah, and, and with no debt. We have no, with no debt. We have no debt. So yeah. if you find yourself in the need of something and you don't have all the provision, it's not lack, it's seed, and you can sow that intentionally. Now, key number eight, which sort of sums up all this, God gives us wisdom. Wisdom is so important, Robert, when you're, you're, you're wanting to grow in provision. And what you and I both noticed this over the years is that people, sometimes when they're struggling and we, we kind of walk them through different things and ask them all the right questions, I find that a lot of times the reason why they're not in abundance is because of lack of wisdom. Yeah. They made some unwise choices, unwise investments, unwise uh, spending. For example, if you are spending more than what your income is, that's not wisdom, right? right? right. So wisdom, the Bible says, is the principal thing. And in wisdom's left hand is riches mm. and honor. Yes. So when you have wisdom, you have wealth. It says that right in Proverbs, right. you know, um, with wisdom comes wealth. And so wisdom will teach you not only how to create wealth, but how to steward it. Mm. And stewardship is just as important as obtaining wealth. Because many people, I mean, even people that win, win lotteries, it is proven That's right. that they lose it again. Why? No wisdom. Right. Right. And also there might be some other spiritual ramifications in that example. But, um, but yeah, wisdom is absolutely, absolutely important because you can be given so much like an inheritance. And if you don't have wisdom on how to steward that yeah. and how to um, spend it and how to invest it, then you could lose it all. Yeah. But when you're in wisdom, uh, it, it will flourish. And in in uh, James 1, we're taught that if we lack wisdom, right. all we have to do is ask for it. That's right. And it'll be given to us gener generously. So it's not something that is withheld from us. It's available to every person. We just have to ask for it and believe for it. And I remember uh, being in a season of my life where years, for years, I read every day the first 10 chapters of Proverbs mm. because I wanted wisdom. Yeah. And I thought, I'm going to go into the Word and receive this wisdom, and I would make wisdom decrees every day. And, um, yeah, and I did it for years because I was so hungry to get wisdom. But as I look back and see all the supernatural wisdom God gave me in different things, that it just comes up comes up roses when mm. it, 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 it doesn't even make sense. Right. Like even our ministry recently... We were directed by the Spirit to purchase a piece of property. Mm -hmm. And right in the middle of the COVID, yeah, thing, it didn't make right. sense, uh -uh. right? Uh -uh. But there was wisdom behind it. The Lord showed me three points of wisdom on why it would be good for us to do it. And so we went ahead and did it. And it was just crazy. Not only did we get the, the uh, property, we were able to bless a ministry mm -hmm. couple with that place to live in as they were transitioning yes. with no cost. Yes. And... Our bank account, it was just crazy. We had to write the check for the property. We paid cash for yep. it. But then the balance on our account was exactly the it same came as right before, back up. It was, it before was we bought it. Because it was the wisdom of God. You follow the wisdom of God. So the wisdom of God doesn't always seem wise. Right. But when it's him giving you the wisdom and you follow through with it, it blesses you every time. The Lord's given us wisdom on when to downsize. Yes, that's he, correct. He says, well, I want you to streamline. Mm -hmm. I want you to prune some things. And so in a way, things were smaller on one level. And yet at the same time, he had us expand on yes. other levels. Our reach right? and influence would explode. And we just followed his wisdom. It didn't make sense at the time. Right. We followed his wisdom right. and it just worked every single time. We found out after we did it, how it just you know, flourished and, and caused us to grow and kept us out of what could have been problems because of the way the economy went, especially back in 2008 and that. Mm -hmm. So it's just pretty amazing the way the Lord grants wisdom. And also, by the way, um, I love this book. It's Decrees. I, we love Decrees. Yes, Decrees We're are so decrees. powerful. In fact, you have a new book yes. out, 31 Decrees for, uh, of Blessing for Men. Yes. 
Great devotional, decrease. especially for the men in your life. Get it as a gift. But decrease for your financial breakthrough. If you proclaim decrease into your life every day on the area of provision that you need, that word goes to work for you and starts to create it. Right. It, it, it just like is a, a, a magnet for itself. So it establishes um, that realm in your a life. A great tool. Yeah. So there you go. Eight decrees that will, or sorry, eight keys and decrees are an important part of that, but eight keys that will propel you in to supernatural provision. God wants to bless you beyond your ability to ask, think, or comprehend so that you can be a blessing because when you're a blessing, it puts him who blesses on display. And just before we go, I want to echo something else Patricia said. I want to invite you to partner with us as we continue to do these live streams, streaming shows, the media that we do to get the word out, get the message out, to equip, to encourage, and to empower believers all over the world and reach the lost. You can be a part of that, not only being blessed, but be a blessing to others so they can be blessed by going to our ministry website, patriciakingministries.com. Click on that donate button, and I even encourage you to partner with us. Be part of our Go team that helps take the gospel, this message of hope, blessing, encouragement, and empowerment to everyone, everywhere, all around the world. Go and partner with us today, and thank you for being with us today as we propelled you into supernatural provision. Amen.